On March 1st, 2024, Mox Masters, one of the most well-known CDH webcam tournament circuits, suspended all events going forward. The issues that caused the suspension included, but were not limited to, cheating, the 2-0 draw problem, bad actors in the community, tournaments in a single day, and profitability. Anyone paying attention to the format at even a casual level could see that this was a long time coming, as CDH has had a plethora of bad actor and cheating incidents. Even ignoring this, CDH has several issues that prevent it from standing alongside other officially recognized formats. So from the social issues of numerous cheating and problematic community situations, to the mechanical issues of running a four-player competitive format, Let's take a look at some of the reasons that CDH struggles to become a true format. Do you have anything? I'm not going to cast it if you don't have anything. Like, it's up to you. You can activate your Thrasios right now if you want. Uh, like, it's up to you, my friend. For those who don't know, CDH, or Competitive Elder Dragon High Council, is a competitive spin on EDH, or Commander. In Commander, four players participate in a 1v1v1v1 game with a legendary creature, unless said otherwise, in the command zone as the commander. The commander card locks the deck's color identity to itself. So, a blue-green commander locks the deck to only playing cards that are blue, green, or colorless. The format is a 100 card singleton with each player starting at 40 life. Commander is touted as the casual format of the game, where rule zero, or the idea that your playgroup should discuss power level before the game starts, reigns supreme. Where social politics, curating a game experience for fun and enjoyable stories, and tempering your play so that players stay in are key aspects. With these social rules in place, CDH chooses to ignore those, with all four players sitting down knowing that their opponents have brought the strongest version of their deck possible, with every intent to win as fast as they can, or as slow as they can in the case of stacks. The C in CDH stands for competitive, after all, and the format makes use of that. Cards such as Dockside Extortionist, Thassa's Oracle, and Underworld Breach have become mainstays as fast, powerful win conditions, whereas the average commander group rule zeroed those cards a long time ago. So what's the big deal? It just sounds like CDH players just enjoy playing commander at a higher power level. Their rule zero is bringing the most powerful thing they can. What's wrong with that? Well. Issues arise when you introduce tournaments and prize support. Commander was never designed to be a tournament format, and there's numerous mechanical issues that arise once it becomes that. Starting with... In Magic, basically anytime anything happens, there's a round of priority. A player casts a spell, the other player gets a chance to respond to it, and then the spell resolves. Seems easy enough. But... What happens when priority is applied to a game with three other opponents? Priority goes from a single thing to a whole round of priority. This round starts at the opponent sitting clockwise to the player who casts the spell. If they have no response, priority goes to the opponent clockwise to them and so forth until the spell or ability resolves. Priority bullying is a strategy where a player is given priority, has the answer to the spell or ability in hand to stop it, but knows or thinks another opponent has a way to stop it, so does nothing and lets priority pass. This puts the player clockwise to them in a situation where they are bullied into using their interaction, even though the previous player had interaction to answer it. This creates an environment where chair placement at the pod matters. The person directly to the left of the player with the important spell or ability has the most bullying leverage, and the player directly to the right of the player with the important spell or ability has the least. This player is the last person before the round of priority fully passes and the spell or ability resolves. So if no one else does anything, they have no choice but to use their removal or else the game is over. Generally, the priority bullied player has to give in and use their interaction or just lose the game on the spot. But sometimes the priority bullied player stands up to it, much to the dismay of the bully. Ah, uh, very cool. Yeah, this, I, yeah. Uh, Ping, do you want to let me know what you have? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to just pass priority? Co consonant. Yeah, you you got your MBT. Got this. I mean, yeah, are you? Like, do you have anything? I'm not gonna cast it if you don't have anything. Like, it's up to you. Like, you can activate your Thrasios mm, right now if you want. I, I, I like, can, it's up to you, my friend. The thing is, if I deal with the Grand which I'm not saying I can, 
but theoretically if I deal with the Karambosha, he will not be dumb enough to fucking cast the Dockside. Then you still have your MAT and he still has the Dockside. Like if is, you pass Pryo, Waffles, I will also pr pass Pryo. Well, I mean, if you want to lose the game, it's fine. But uh, if you have something, you can reset priority, do whatever you want. You can, if yeah, you tell me what you have, I will something. interact. I, I, I passed priority. I passed priority. Okay. I well, pass. no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ping, I mean, I'm going to keep passing priority until you do something. Same. I'm going to pass priority one more time. I would pass this way. I mean, you I could activate Thrasis if you want if you want to lose, but um, it's no, up to you, no, my friend. No, 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 you have damage. If you pass, I will also pass. Cool. I mean, it's up to you, my friend. You could do something or not. Like you said that like five times. I you might don't have think I want to share. No, okay, cool. Then I'll pass priority. Uh, yeah. You got AGA. Sure. I'll cast the dark side. I cannot do that. Seven trades. Cast an Oswald. Dark side. Dark side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm at six. I mean. Um. If you guys are cool, I'd like to present a loop of casting Dockside for Oswald and netting multiple treasures, and then being able to recast Jessica and kill the table. Works. Yep. GG. GG. Wow. Good game. ID, or intentional draw, is something that happens between EXO records in competitive environments. The top players decide to draw with each other because it's safer to draw and get a guaranteed in to top 8 than to play it out and risk losing the guaranteed in. While a somewhat controversial practice at low stakes events and tables, intentionally drawing is almost expected at high level and competitive events. But the thing to keep in mind with intentionally drawing is it can only be done if all players agree. You ask your opponent if they want to draw, they agree, you get a draw, it's over. There's no way to intentionally draw without all players agreeing. Or is there? Let's apply intentional draw to a four player format. Let's say players one and two at the table are 2-0, so intentionally drawing is beneficial to their chances of topping. But players three and four are 1-1, one, one. So a draw here doesn't help them lock a top slot, as they need wins. So, what happens? For players 1 and 2, the choice is obvious. For the sake of their records, they collude with each other to either A, create a game state where a draw is inevitable, or B, target players 3 and 4 and then intentionally draw. So, not exactly how a competitive round of CD8s should go. But what if players 1, 2, and 3 are 2-0, but player 4 is 1-1? One, one? Well, player 4 has just made themselves the archenemy of the game. Players 1, 2, and 3 will collude with each other and target player 4 out of the game, and then once player 4 is gone, all three of them will intentionally draw. And they say there's no politics in CDH. This creates borderline unsportsmanlike situations where players will collude with each other and target players out of the game, or make a game state so miserable that it has to become a draw state. And as you can imagine, this is pretty miserable for the 1-1 players at the table. Not only this, but it makes tournament results a nightmare when an entire top 16 bracket is filled with 2-0-X. And throughout this, we've been talking a lot about the mechanical nightmares of CDH, but there's one other bigger nightmare for CDH that's even more difficult to manage. We knew this section was coming. CDH has become ingrained in its culture with cheating situations due to being one of the biggest webcam tournament formats. When CDH webcam tournaments first started, they were operated in good faith, where you assumed that the other players were not cheating because it was all good faith. You were there to try and play to win. But as the format has gotten bigger, the lack of judges being directly at the tables in person has made cheating almost trivial in webcam events, being far easier to sneak cards in or not shuffle properly when you're just at your computer at home. And of course, as the tournament scene for CDH grew, it attracted more and more bad actors. As CDH gets bigger and bigger, these bad actors get pushed more and more to the forefront, and become more prominent parts of CDH culture, at least to the people who aren't actively playing the format. This means that players who might be interested in getting into CDH and trying webcam tournaments see the situations that are happening with cheating or bad situations in terms of like a toxic community level and avoid the format entirely. The bigger the format gets, and with its explosion in popularity over COVID due to being able to play over webcam, these issues continue to get brought to the forefront. And 
CDH is now a format where this sort of drama happens monthly. From several situations of cheating caught later by the community, to players doxing and sending death threats to Eminence gaming members because they dared measure decks based on tournament results. The constant stream of controversy and negative press has overshadowed the good parts of the community and painted a grotesque picture of what CDH is. What used to be a new way to experience a competitive environment and break away from the chains of rule zero has now become this environment of toxicity, cheating, and is driving away interested players to the format. How can a format continue to keep standing when its community continues to shoot it in the foot? A question that doesn't get asked enough of the CDH community is, why is CDH your competitive format of choice? Because sure, maybe you like the play patterns, maybe you like the idea of expressing yourself with your specific commander, but those aren't reasons to play a format competitively, those are reasons to play a format for fun. Why do you tournament grind CDH? If your desire for Magic is to play a competitive and skill-intensive game, why not choose one of the myriad of 1v1 formats that allow you to be competitive and skill-intensive because they're designed for competitive play? Is it because it feels like it's limiting your expression? Well, maybe you shouldn't be playing in tournaments then. Maybe you shouldn't say, I competitively play CDH, because realistically, if you were competitively playing CDH, you'd probably just be throwing Najila or Tivit or Rogsai or whatever is good that week right at the camera. But you don't. You play your quirky commander that might be B or C tier, but you like it and you want to play it. And that's totally fine, but in formats with multiple strategies, variance occurs because, at the very least, there's multiple ways to win. But in a format like CDH, where the only real way to win is with combo, why play any other commander but the ones that accomplish this as quickly and effectively as possible? You should not be playing a competitive format where you can lose because one of your opponents was ill-informed and made the wrong call. And at the end of the day, if the reason you like playing CDH competitively is because of that expressionism and that idea that you can bring your commander that you like to play there and try to do decently, you're not really playing CDH. Your reasons have looped back around to casual commander. This video may portray me as a CDH hater, but Honestly, the opposite is true. I played CDH for about a year and a half and had an absolute blast doing it. I made weekly gameplay videos of CDH with my friends, and I had a blast doing all of that. I loved Shorkai as my serious CDH deck and Asurak as my meme CDH deck. Ironically, I think it's a format that's at its best when you get together with a group of friends and just play. As for the future of CDH in a tournament setting, my opinion is bleak. I am not a fan of the idea of playing for prizes on a webcam tournament in the first place. It's just too easy to cheat over webcam and too easy to circumvent bans if you just change your username or change your account. On the community side, bad apples and cheaters need to be ostracized from the community as soon as possible and immediately called out when these situations happen. And as for the tournament side, the 2-0 draw problem has to be fixed. There are organizations that are currently working to fix this problem, which is great, but it's a long road ahead. And I don't know if it's a road that CDH can safely cross in the long term. With all of these issues, the legitimacy of CDH as a format is in a death spiral. On April 9th, 2024, Wizards of the Coast announced competitive commander leagues for Magic the Gathering Online, bringing the format to an official client. This solves the cheating issue, as there's no way to cheat on the client. And this shows Wizards of the Coast might be making a push to legitimize the format. On top of this, while webcam tournaments are struggling and see some of the worst community behavior, in-person CDH events are thriving. 
Command Tower's tournament software has been a massive boon to paper tournaments, with 184 competitors attending Punt City 3 and Cowtown Throwdown selling out 256 spots within a few hours. Turns out, some issues can be avoided by just jamming paper in person with the good parts of the community. While I am skeptical of the mechanical issues that exist within CDH and whether or not they can be looked past, it looks like CDH may be well on its way to becoming a real format after all.